what is the VFT, uh, how it functions, it uh, uses an application. And then we'll see a very important topic of VFT selection criteria. What are the basic parameters and functionalities uh, basis of which a VFT is selected for different applications. And during that, we will cover the advantages and disadvantages of VFT. Now, within this, there are topics of EMC and Harmonix. It basically comes under the advantages and disadvantages. So these two points need a certain more consideration. So we will be covering this in a little more detail. And then we'll have the ABB VFD portfolio along with the ultra low harmonic solution from of VFD from ABB. So starting with the ABB. ABB again, right now we are discussing about the ABB drive stream. We are from the motion division. ABB has basically various divisions. Uh, four major divisions. So motion is one of them. In motion, we have uh, drives and motors. So Mr. if Kamran, I come, you have to present your screen. It's going blank as of now. So you have to share from where we had left. So no, it's still not visible. The headquarters in Bangalore, and uh, our drives factory is also in Bangalore. We have basically two drive factories in Bangalore. One is the Pinia, where we uh, manufacture the drive modules, and another uh, little distance ahead in Nilmangla where we manufacture the system drives and the customized solutions. So these are all old drives uh, built to Finland standards and uh, most of the India uh, drives which are used are manufactured here. So this is the, some snapshots of this. Plus we ABB covers the entire India. We have uh, our uh, sales offices plus service centers across India, plus a channel network of more than 100 channel partners reaching every corner of the country. And uh, if you see the market served, you can name any industry and uh, ABP is present in uh, that industry. It could be HVAC, food and beverage, water, wind, steel, mining, any any industry, APB has its presence in that industry. Now, if I talk about the Indian market share, you can see uh, ABB is much ahead of all the competitors. We are the clear market leaders. This is uh, this is not just only the HVAC. This is including all the industries. So, if we combine the total VFD sale in India, then ABB is a clear leader, both in LV drives as well as in the MV drives. <coughs> Now coming to our HVAC, uh, our typical HVAC system, and in this the various applications where a VFD can be used is uh, right from the chillers uh, for the compressor, we are supplying too many chiller manufacturers, then uh, cooling towers, primary, secondary pumping, AHUs, HRW, all these places VFD can be used. Now, why do we need a VFT and what are the uses of VFT? This in general, I'm talking the initial most important uh, first point would be the inrush current. So basically it is used to control a motor. Whenever a motor starts, motor has a very high inertia. So because of that, there is a huge inrush current. And uh, without any starting device, the inrush current uh, can go more than seven to eight times of the nominal current. So this uh, gives a momentary overload a very high peak during starting which uh, can affect the entire supply or if uh, generators are being it can trip the generator it affects the transformer and in turn cumulatively it can affect the grid also then uh, that's the reason uh, we need some starting device again when it starts it's a sudden start so for that we uh, which is again undesirable it uh, causes a lot of fluctuations and mechanical wear and tear on the motor and on the mechanical equipment also so we need uh, some method or some device which can control the starting as well as stopping which can give a smooth start and stop plus the torque control torque is basically the rotational power so one is the rpm a motor is running but it should generate the power to turn the uh, my next connected uh, load also so uh, it gives a precise torque control uh, plus process automation or speed control uh, motor by itself it will uh, whether it's a two pole four pole uh, six pole motor accordingly it will run at its uh, given rpm but we every time it doesn't need to run at the full rpm so we need a precise control and then a uh, very important factor especially for the hvac industry is the energy efficiency uh, all the above factors 
are important and they are more critical in other industries. But in HVAC industry, the VFD is used. The primary reason is for energy efficiency. Other factors are not that critical. So, in general, we can say, uh, and the energy efficiency which we achieve or the savings which we can get by using a VFD is phenomenal. A very small example is if we can reduce the speed by just 10 percent, then the energy efficiency which we which we achieve is uh, more than 27 percent. So even a slight reduction in speed is a very really huge amount of energy saving. Now we'll go to different uh, devices and different starting methods. So the most most uh, basic and uh, traditional method what we have is the DOL and Star Delta. This is traditionally used one of the most uh, economic solution and most widely used solution. But again, it has its own uh, disadvantages. Advantages, it is easily available and it is very cost effective, but then it doesn't uh, give value to one starting. Here also, we, uh, the inrush current is in multiples. Next, we have soft starter. Soft starter is a device which will help in starting and uh, during stopping also. Uh, here also, but the inrush current also, it, uh, although it reduces as compared to dual star delta, but uh, still it is not in a 1 is to 1 ratio. The inrush current is approximately two times of the nominal current. So next we have is the VFD solution. Now VFD is a device which gives 1 is to 1 starting current. It can help in the start, it can help in the stop. Additionally, it can help during the process, during the running also. So we have a brief uh, comparison. Uh, we have various starting methods and a comparison. So a DOL, uh, does a DOL help in uh, high inrush current? No. Star delta, soft starter and drives, yes. So if you can see the various uh, parameters like high inrush current, heavy wear and tear and on the mechanical equipments, then torque and current peaks, water hammering and piping system, all these things, DOL is uh, not very suitable, star delta to a certain extent. Soft starter helps in these things. But there is one thing, once the motor has started, then during the operation, even soft starter cannot help with the speed control. So drive or a VFD is the only product which uh, gives uh, 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 helps in all these parameters as well as during the operation also. Now, going to the VFD, this is a basic uh, construction of a VFD. Uh, if I have to define a block diagram, we can uh, divide it into three parts. One is the input side, which is uh, made of uh, transistors, then the intermediate circuit, and the output side. Output side is made up of uh, IGBTs. The input side is made up of uh, transistors, the transistor bridge, and the intermediate circuit has uh, some uh, is a DC circuit basically it has some capacitors and some filters. So if you see the input current, the three-phase current is fed to the transistor. Here, this is converted into DC. Then we perform some functions on this. Some filtering is performed in the intermediate circuit. And then this DC current is supplied to the IGBTs. IGBTs have very high switching frequency. And as per the desired load or as per the desired functionality, these IGBTs uh, are programmed. They have uh, fixed algorithm and switching patterns. Accordingly, they give the desired output. Now the output which we get from IGBT is actually a PWM output, which is a digital signal. It's a pulse width modulated signal, but it resembles a sine wave. So when this is fed to a motor, to a motor, it acts as a sine wave, but actually it is a DC signal. It's a PWM output. Uh, if there's any question in between, you can ask. Now coming to this, uh, we have understood what is uh, now coming to the basic selection criteria of VFD. Uh, there are various uh, parameters depending on the application, depending on the function, depending on the connected load, as well as the specifications and the environment, various factors which need to be considered. Now while selecting a VFD, the most basic is the voltage range and the kilowatt rating. So most of our applications fall under three phase, uh, 415 volt, 50 hertz. In India, we have 50 hertz. In other US and European countries, we have uh, 60 hertz also. So the drive should be suitable for both if it's for an export project. Then it can uh, kilowatt. 
drives are available right from uh, fractional kilowatt up to megawatt range. So uh, drive should uh, cover the entire range. Then protection class. This is the physical protection of the VFD. So normally drives are, are available in IP21 and for higher protection in IP55 protection also. Now, if a drive is being mounted inside a panel, then IP21 is good enough and it's uh, safe enough. However, many applications where we need to install it directly on the wall inside the room or maybe probably inside the HU room or if there is uh, no space for additional panel, then it has to be directly mounted outside the panel. In that case, IP21 is not recommended. So we can go for a IP55 protection VFD. So uh, VFD should have uh, all types of protection. Then one is the common interface. This interface is the, basically the key pin which we have on the VFD. One is it should be detachable. So if it is going inside a panel, it should, uh, it should be able to detach that and mount it on the door. Otherwise, there is no point if every time you have to open the panel door for any programming or checking this. It should be detachable and mountable on the panel door. So it uh, displays all the required parameters, not just in uh, codes, but also in engineering units. Plus, it, the lighting should be proper so that it is visible from distance and uh, the all the outputs which are required. Could be frequency, hertz, voltage, band, RPM, status, all these things should be available on the keypad. Then there are, uh, because the unit is the device which is supplying to the motor. So all the motor protective functions should be inbuilt in the VFD. So basic functions like overload, overcurrent, over temperature, phase loss, phase shift, all these types of protections should be available in the VFD. So that in case of any issues, the motor is not affected and the VFD, either it will get tripped or it will stop the supply to the motor. So these functions should be inbuilt in the VFD. <coughs> then coated boards. If we see the internal construction of a VFD, it is basically consists of PCBs. There are two main boards. One is the control board and another is the power board. And uh, it's a PCB. So what happens is if the board's, uh, board does not have an additional coating. Then over a period of time, due to moisture and dust, there are chances that uh, dust and moisture uh, can accumulate on that and it can cause shorting. Many a times we have seen these cases where uh, uh, entire protection is not there and uh, proper dusting and maintenance is not there. So we have seen that due to moisture and dust accumulation, many a times uh, the VFD is shorted. We say it has burnt out or cooked gear. So if uh, there is a coated board, so life of the equipment increases and uh, unnecessary shutdowns. Then there is uh, communication protocols. There are uh, various protocols which are available in the market. In the HVAC industry, the most common protocol is uh, Modbus and then BACnet. These are the two most widely used protocols. So uh, we should have the desired protocols in bed without any additional car or any additional equipment it should be inbuilt so that whenever it goes to the site it is it has the required protocols it is ready just it needs to be connected or many times it happens that if the bms window changes and the protocol change from maybe one bus to back it or to better six so you don't need to change the vfd the protocols should already be there inside the vfd so it has the end client to save cost and uh, faster operation. This is one function called as PID and uh, feedback loops. So in the functionalities is uh, one the most basic is uh, for uh, speed control. So here the planning people must be aware. Uh, what we do is based on the uh, based on the pressure feedback. We provide a pressure feedback to the VFD and based on that, we control the fan speed. So this is a PID functionality where the VFD continuously monitors the duct pressure and uh, a set value is programmed inside the VFD. So it tries to maintain the duct pressure and uh, as per the changes in the duct pressure, if it is increasing, so it will reduce the fan speed. If it is, the duct pressure is reducing, so it will increase the fan speed to maintain the desired pressure. So this is one PID loop. Similarly, uh, VFD should be suitable to support 
additional PID loops. Additional PID loop could be, for example, we could take a temperature feedback, and based on the temperature feedback, we can control the chill water valve also. Now, this is uh, again uh, gives a higher and additional amount of energy saving. One is we have achieved the duct pressure. Still, if say for example, we have uh, set a temperature of 21 degrees inside the room, but if the occupancy is low and the temperature is now going below 21 degrees, so we have reduced the fan speed, we are saving energy over there. Additionally, what we can do is based on the temperature feedback, we can additionally control the chill water consumption also. So, if uh, we have achieved the desired temperature, then what VFD will do is it will uh, shut down the chill water valve also. It will modulate that valve so that the chill water consumption also reduces. This helps in additional amount of energy saving. And this will have a cascading backward effect. If the chill water consumption reduces, so there will be back pressure on the pump. If there is a VFT on the pump, it will detect that back pressure and it will reduce the speed of the pump, which in, uh, in turn, the cascading effect will go up to the chiller. So with just the HU, we can control a very high level of uh, further automation as well as energy saving in the entire system. So this is the functionality of PID. So the VFD should uh, have these uh, PID loops inbuilt and it should uh, support at least two to three PIDs. Then there's the IO configuration. Basically the VFDs have inbuilt uh, digital and analog inputs. These are used for various control and uh, status uh, functionalities. So it uh, gives the status, it communicates with the BMS system, the start stop command and the status run trip auto, all these status is sent over these uh, uh, IOs. Similarly, for the PID to function also, it needs the analog inputs and outputs because these devices, uh, like the sensors and all, they are analog devices. So there should be a sufficient number of analog inputs to have these PID functionalities. Then again, we have this uh, uh, real-time clock. This real-time clock again is a very important feature. Uh, this uh, there are basically two functions of real-time clock. One is the scheduling function. Based on the real-time clock, we can program the VFT and the output and the entire HVAC system based on time scheduling. So uh, the time at which it should start. Uh, for example, if it's an office environment. We can define like uh, 9 a.m. it should start, 1 p.m. it should slow down, 1 to 2 it should be at 50% speed, and then again should start, 6 p.m. it should shut down. So this is an automatic uh, control of the HVAC system. Similarly, we can program holidays also in, in it. So Saturday, Sundays, it should not work, plus entire year's public holidays. For example, many places, uh, manually it is being done, but if you want automation, then you can set the entire calendar for the entire year and you can program the holidays also so that there is no undue setting if it's a holiday and say it's a Monday. So normally a VFD would start, the HVC system would start. But if it's a holiday, then it shouldn't start. So we can feed the, those holidays also. There's a function of uh, uh, time scheduling. Then second important function is the error time stamping. So if there is any error in the VFD or VFD has a trip or VFD has raised any alarm, so it should be with proper time stamping. What date, what time this error had occurred, it should be able to tell and should be able to record also. So many places for audit purposes, especially in uh, uh, pharma and uh, IT industries, this uh, is a required function. So this real-time clocks helps in that. And it also helps in analyzing your uh, overall pattern and consumption. It gives a historical chart also with proper date and time. Plus any errors if had occurred, we can come to exactly at what time it had occurred and uh, we can conclude the reason for that also based on this. Then there is EMC and Harmonix. So far what we have seen are all the advantages. Now there are some disadvantages of VFD. So EMC and Harmonix are uh, two such uh, factors. These two points we will cover in a little more uh, detail. Uh, which will come next. Uh, after that, there is uh, safety functions, basically safe talk off and uh, fire mode operation. Uh, safe talk off is uh, basically uh, if a command is given to VFD, there shouldn't be any nuisance uh, starting, or it shouldn't. There shouldn't be any undesired uh, rotation. 
in case if uh, some uh, maintenance activity is being done so if uh, a stop command is given then uh, due to back pressure or just any uh, uh, loose current it shouldn't rotate so that is the functionality it should have that functionality and fire mode operation in hv system is a very important function uh, most of these specifications and uh, the building codes require this this says that in case of fire based on the application the vfd should have this functionality where either it will stop functioning if it detects fire or in some cases it will start running at full speed normally what happens there are various controls which have been designed inside the vfd to protect the vfd like over temperature over current short circuit some commands from the vms system so which uh, if those come the vfd will trip but if it is if it is in a fire mode operation and for example if it is a ventilation system so what happens uh, and in fires what we have seen is fire is not that fatal but uh, the more fatalities occur because of the smoke so in any building system uh, proper arrangement should be such that the smoke is ventilated immediately one thing second it should not spread from one part to the another part through the internal ducting so fire mode operation inside the vfd takes care of that so for example if it's uh, for a ventilation system and it detects uh, that there is a fire so what we will do it will bypass all other command it can uh, receive a command of over temperature or over current so it will not look at it it will bypass that and keep running at full speed so that there is full ventilation till it itself gets burned suppose it itself catches fire then only it will stop otherwise it will keep running at full speed similarly for any other application which is for hu where it is uh, being used on in the internal duct system then it should uh, immediately stop and if it is for say fresh air should uh, should stop the supply of oxygen so there are various functionalities all these things can be programmed the main thing is that this fire mode operation should be there the vfd should be able to detect that and perform the desired operation then there are some safety interlocks also uh, like uh, damper check control if the damper is open then only the fan should start or uh, some uh, interlocks like uh, door open interlock is uh, if it's a hu and if the door is open some maintenance activities you know someone is doing some activity inside the hu then it should not start so these interlocks are, are inbuilt in the vfd then there is some uh, inbuilt macros for fast insulation uh, these are like uh, fan menu pump menu compressor menus these are inbuilt in the vfd so you have to just select the application and automatically all those uh, desired uh, parameters come you have to just choose and select then various alarms shipping auto restart functionality is there so whatever the condition uh, like over temperature over current short circuit single phasing the vfd again the vfd can be programmed so either it will raise an alarm and uh, shut down or it will raise an alarm and keep running so we can program it like that auto restart is also there for say there is a momentary power loss so vfd should be able to auto restart once the power resumes but again this auto restart also should be controlled and programmable so that uh, there is no nuisance start many a time there is a continuous uh, power failure and power comes again it goes so every start and stop affects the life of the vfd so it shouldn't happen that it is continuously starting and stopping so it should take care of that also additionally it should give the kwh data as well as the and Energy saving calculations, like uh, what is the KWH assumed over a period of time, consumed over a period of time, as well as the energy which has been saved in that duration. I hope this much is clear so far. Uh, can anyone just confirm? Are you there? Yeah, Mr. Kamran, it's clear. Will at the end of your presentation. Hello. Ten harmonics. Basically, these are noises or undesired signals. noise is basically electrical noise so harmonics is the low frequency noise basically from 100 kilohertz to 3 kilohertz and emc is the high frequency noise it is also known as rfi which is a radio frequency interference so radio frequency is a, a, a high frequency signal so it is above 150 kilohertz so harmonics is basically both are noise but both are different the causes are different and the mitigation techniques are also different harmonics is a low frequency noise and emc is a high frequency noise 
now we'll go a bit more into detail about emc what is emc and how we can control the emc uh when we see say emc basically emc is electromagnetic compatibility uh, when we say that uh, vfb has a emc filter or it is emc compliant it means that uh, uh, it has the emc mitigation techniques and it is immune one is immune from other noise other emc noise so from any other equipments radiating or conducting the noise will not affect my equipment as well as my equipment doesn't generate emc to affect other equipments so the emc standard say that the equipment itself should be immune so there are two parts one is immunity and the other is emission so both these things should be there so uh, we have, uh, in case of vfd there are uh, various parameters how it is checked so if uh, talking about emc the standards uh, are, which uh, is uh, for emc is ieee 61800-3 so this standard first defines the environment in which uh, this uh, product or the power uh, device is being used so it devices uh, divides basically into two parts one is the low voltage public network and second is the uh, first environment and second environment first environment is basically public low voltage network where there is a shared transformer and second environment is mostly the industrial environment Uh, which have their own dedicated transformers. So, first environment uh, comes uh, like most of the residential and commercial applications. They fall under first environment, and uh, industrial applications like uh, plants and factories they fall under second environment. Now, within first environment, again there is uh, the restricted distribution and unrestricted distribution. We will uh, see this. What it says: IEC six one eight double zero dash three. it uh, defines first environment and second environment what we have seen and again the the common terminology which is used is c1 c2 c3 and c4 uh, criteria c4 uh, category of filters so now c1 category of filter is intended for use in the first environment uh for uh, unrestricted distribution this is basically uh, all the plug and play devices and which is uh, can be used by a layman so this is, is basically like our uh, uh, laptop chargers mobile uh, chargers connectors all these categories they fall under c1 category so any equipment which is uh, supplying uh, to these household devices and fixed equipment which is not movable and uh, any layman can use it for that the required filter category is c1 then comes the c2 category filter c2 is uh, basically again uh, first environment unrestricted distribution uh, first environment restricted distribution this is basically for any commercial application or any equipment which needs some technician to install commission and use and which is not a plug and play device and which is not movable a hand carry kind of device so most of our hvac applications at least for the commercial <coughs> installations they fall under c2 category then after that we have c3 and c4 category these are mostly for uh, the industrial applications or in uh, commercial applications where the power quality is not very critical so by critical we mean installations like uh, hospitals and airports where a communication system is there or data centers they fall under the critical category and uh, other installations where uh, uh, any change in uh, power quality is uh, not a very critical or it does not have a very big effect falls under a uh, non critical one so c3 and c4 is uh, basically for industrial applications mostly so this was the emc so emc we have understood its high frequency noise and it can be mitigated by using a emc filter the emc filters uh, available are c1 c2 c3 and c4 category for uh, very critical applications c1 is recommended otherwise most of the hvac applications fall under c2 category and in c3 and c4 is for the industrial environment now we will go to harmonics now what is harmonics we have seen that harmonics again is a type of noise only and it's a low frequency noise 
Now, what causes harmonics? Harmonics is caused by non-linear loads. Now, in our typical modern buildings, all the loads, most of the loads are non-linear loads. So it could be your laptop, your lighting system, your UPS, Xerox machine. Most of the any equipment which has electronics in it is a non-linear load. Our linear load was uh, basically the bulb, the old light bulbs which we had. Those were the uh, linear loads. Or motor is a non-linear load. But otherwise, most of the electronic equipment, all these are uh, non-linear loads, and all these equipment generate harmonics. Uh, we have seen examples, all the photocopiers, domestic appliances, PCs, PLC, TV, UPS, SMPS, VFD, all these are non-linear loads and they cause harmonics. Now, what is the effect of harmonics? It uh, causes uh, overheating in the cable, in the transformer. Because of that, uh, if you see during the initial electrical designing of the transformer and the supply cables, Additional safety factors should be considered. So the transformer has to be oversized. The cables have to be oversized so that along with the required current, they are able to conduct and take care of the additional harmonic current also. Uh, because of that, uh, one is overheating many times. Uh, this short circuit uh, occurs. We see most of the most common reason for fire in any building is short circuit, and uh, short circuit occurs because Two cables running parallel, they somehow got connected. So how they got connected, although they are insulated, so over a period of time, because that's oversizing or this harmonic current was not considered, was not taken into consideration, and the insulation was not to that level of uh, insulation which was desired. So over a period of time, the insulation burns out, and this causes shorting. Second uh, challenge is. Uh, Basically, the communication, if uh, my PMS system is there and some communication is running parallel to this, so it causes disturbance in that. Similarly, uh, sensitive electronic equipment can uh, get damaged. They will show wide, uh, uh, continuous uh, wide movement. Or if uh, there are some sensors and all, the readings won't be proper and the resonances occur, fuses can blow. So these are the challenges. And again, because of this, we have to always oversize our transformers, our equipment, even the switch gear, the cables. These need to be oversized. Now we'll see what exactly is harmonics. If you can see, this is the fundamental current, uh, which is the 50 hertz. Our basic current is uh, at a 50 hertz frequency. What happens? This is running at 50 hertz. But every cycle generates harmonic current also. And uh, this is the, uh, the odd harmonics basically are harmful. If you see this uh, blue line, if it's visible. So this is the fifth harmonic. So the third, fifth, seventh, eleventh, these harmonics are harmful. Second, similarly, there is second, fourth, uh, sixth harmonic also. But these even harmonics, they cancel out each other. If, for example, you see here so they are the opposing harmonics so these opposing currents opposing waveforms they cancel out each other so they don't have uh, much harmful effect but the odd harmonies they add up so each harmonic up to we normally consider up to the 50th harmonic so these harmonics they add up and they cause changes in the waveform so if you see the final waveform it is highly distorted so this distortion causes all those harmful effects and it uh, normally harmonics travels backwards. So from the source, say if it's a VFD, from the VFD it will go to the main PCC and from there to the transformer. And now harmonics here uh, is very important because now the power supply companies and the government also has uh, made very strict regulations which are now in place and we have to control the harmonics at the source itself. Because it affects the transformer and it can affect the supply grid also. So we need to take care of harmonics. Now, how do we do that? So what is, we'll see the guidelines for harmonics. Uh, the most common uh, guidelines is uh, we have is IEEE 519, which uh, defines the level of harmonics which can be there in any system. So there are various percentages of harmonics depending on the transformer rating. 
So right from the 5% up to 15% of harmonics is allowed. Uh, but the most strict one is 5% and in most of the specifications will say that 5% harmonics is specified. Uh, so depending on the ISC by IL ratio, the short circuit to the load current ratio of the transformer, it is uh, the harmonic percentage is defined. Now again, if we see the IEEE 519 regulations, then what it says the percentage is actually TDD, which is total demand distortion. Many a times it gets uh, confused with uh, THD or THVD, THID. What we can control is the harmonic current, the current harmonics. Uh, voltage harmonics is dependent on current harmonics. So we have uh, two in uh, harmonics. We have uh, basically two parameters, THID and THVD. These together combine, uh, combine from the THD, which is the total harmonic distortion. Now in our control, it is only the current harmonics. Voltage harmonics is a derived function of current harmonics. So based on the current harmonics, THVD can be derived. We cannot directly control THVD. And anyway, THVD is much lower than THID. And what this IEEE 519 talks about is TDD. Basically, TDD is the ratio of non-linear load to the demand load. So TDD is actually, uh, for any system, the TDD, if we actually calculate, it will be even lower than the THD. But anyways, these were the things for uh, THD, uh, for the harmonics, which uh, we should know while we are designing a system and mitigation techniques. Now we have understood what is uh, harmonics. Now what are the various mitigation techniques of uh, harmonics? Now the most basic, common, easy and economical solution is having a choke. This is just a standard uh, mechanical choke. So uh, all the higher VFD, the premium VFDs of any make, they have these chokes inbuilt. This is also called as a choke or a DCR, DC reactor, which is uh, inbuilt in the intermediate circuit. Uh, we had seen the input side, output side, in between there was the intermediate circuit where there is a DC bus. On that circuit, this uh, choke is built. So it controls the harmonics. However, okay, I'll tell you, if there is no protection, if uh, no device is being used to mitigate the uh, harmonics, then typical harmonics which is uh, generated is approximately 70 to 80% of the uh, nominal current. So if a VFD is, for example, rated for 100 amperes, then it will additionally generate 70 to, 70 to 80 amperes of harmonic current, which is a very big number. So we need some mitigation. So choke is the most basic and economical solution. This choke brings down this uh, current harmonics from 80% to approximately 30 to 40%. So it limits the TSID to somewhere between 30 to 40%. But uh, IEEE 519 calls for 5% or if the installation is critical, then we need to come below that. Now, what are the other methods? Now, this was internal to the VFD. Now, if we have to bring down the harmonics to below 30%, then we need some external control, external device or a filter. Now, there are two types of filter which are available. One is a passive filter and another is the active filter. Passive filter is an easier solution and a cost-effective solution. However, there are certain disadvantages with the passive filter as compared to active filter. One is passive filter is designed for a certain load condition or for certain current. So mostly if you ask for a passive filter, the vendor will ask you for the low rating and the current and the passive filter will be supplied for the mostly for the full load condition. So if it's a 100 ampere VFD, so the passive filter will be for 100 ampere. But in a VFD application, wherever there is a VFD, most of the time it does not run at 100% speed. In fact, for the 90% of the time it will be running at reduced speed. So with a passive filter, there will always be a mismatch with the performance of the passive filter and the actual load condition. So the desired harmonic mitigation, which was desired, we don't get that. So at full load, it will give whatever the, there are various categories of filters, 5% filter, 10% filter, 20% filter. So say for example, we have taken a 5% filter. So at a full load condition, more or less, it will give approximately 5%. But as soon as the speed reduces or the actual VFD comes into an effect, then the harmonics again starts increasing. 
plus passive filter cannot uh, they again have limitations they cannot go below 40 to 50 percent uh, below that the uh, power factor uh, uh, quality the power quality reduces uh, tremendously and it affects the overall performance so it is uh, like it is limited to say maximum 40 to 50 percent of the speed it cannot go below that plus it causes a lot of issues in the overall uh, network quality so that's why active filter is recommended Active filter is basically an active device. It uh, inserts opposing current to the harmonic current. So this uh, can give exactly one is to one harmonic uh, mitigation for the entire load. Even at reduced speed, it uh, gives the desired output. Uh, after that, there is there are multi pulse drives. But for our industry, but, uh, we mostly use six pulse drives only. This 12 pulse, 18 pulse, and 24 pulse uh, uh, drives are mostly very big drives and used in industrial applications. These are not for our applications. And then uh, premium solution, which is the ultra low harmonic drive. Basically, this is a drive which has an inbuilt active solution to limit the harmonics to below 5%. ABB low harmonic drives, uh, they limit the harmonics to less than 3%. So, this was the EMC and uh, Harmonics. Now we will come to the ABB offering. Any questions so far? Anyone can you just confirm? The HVAC application. Uh, the we have a basic drive also and advanced drives also depending on the application, the specifications and the uh, commercial aspect. So the basic drive which we have the ACS310 series, this is available, uh, this is again a pump and fan drive and is available up to 22 kilowatt and then we have a general purpose drive which is available up to 160 kilowatt. <coughs> this is our next generation drive and then in the premium range we have the ACH series the ACH 580 standard drive and within ACH 580 we have the low harmonic version also the ultra low harmonic drive and uh, beyond that we have the 880 series which is basically in that we have the regenerative drives uh, multi drives and the ratings uh, in the LV drives go up to 3200 kilowatt and with MV range we can go up to 5600 kilowatt also so these bigger drives are mostly used for uh, uh, chiller applications in HVAC and uh, these regenerative drives we have supplied in many tunnel ventilation applications so mostly for the metros or for the road tunnels uh, these regenerative drives are being used or in industries also regenerative drives are used a lot so but for a typical HVAC application like uh, pump issues and all, we have a 310, 560, and uh, the H series 550 and 580. Now, ACS 310, this is a basic drive. Now, we will compare this with the selection criteria what we had seen. So, with respect to those points, I will just say it, uh, one the range it is available up to 22 kilowatt, uh, and again, the voltage range is covers the entire voltage range right from 380 to 480 volts so some places it is 400 volts some 415 420 440 volt so whatever the voltage range it is suitable similarly it is suitable for 50 hertz as well as 60 hertz also it has overload functionality 110 percent for 60 seconds with repeatability every 10 minutes uh and the environmental design condition it is available in ip20 rating and it is suitable up to 50 degrees also it has uh, conformal coated pcbs so what we had seen the coated boards. So this has the coated boards. It has. Uh, then we this VFD it has an inbuilt EMC filter, but the EMC filter is of C3 C3 category. So this is basically for non-critical applications. And as per the specifications, we can choose this. Then it has the basic modbus communication protocol inbuilt. And it has a single line display which is detachable. Real time clock is uh, inbuilt uh, with an option as an option with the advanced display. The PID functionality it has uh, two PIDs inbuilt with the desired I/O, and uh, the inbuilt uh, macros are there. 
the desired uh, IOs are there and the KWH and energy saving portion is there. So this uh, has most of the functions which we had seen. One thing which it does not have is a choke. So for harmonic filtering, it needs some external device, either a choke externally or a filter if it is being installed, then this drive can be used. Then after this, we have the ACS 560. ACS 560 is available up to 160 kilowatt. Again, the entire voltage range 380 to 480 volt. And it is uh, in environmental condition again IP20. And uh, for temperatures up to 55 degrees, it is suitable. It also has coated boards. Uh, this has a choke inbuilt. Uh, however, the choke is uh, from 15 kilowatt and above. For smaller ratings, it does not have. For higher ratings, the choke is inbuilt. Basically, the reason is for the smaller ratings, the harmonic generated is basically very less in terms of the actual number. In terms of percentage, it is high. But uh, if you see the actual ampere rating of uh, the harmonic current, will be lesser. So these drives have a choke from 15 kilowatt and above. Then again, it has uh, this advanced display by default. This uh, one important feature, this 560 is basically uh, ABB is a global company and whatever products we have are global products which are available everywhere and are as per global design. And as I had said, we have our factory in India and uh, we have our design center as well as R&D center in India. So ACS 560 is a product which has been designed and developed in India by Indians and it is manufactured in India only and also being uh, exported on a limited basis to certain other countries also. So that is the reason we have a Hindi language also in this. So because it was developed here, so we have kept a Hindi language. So many places, especially in rural areas where we don't have very trained manpower to operate. So this becomes a very important uh, function where the user can easily get all the data, all the parameters and the alarms and everything in Hindi language. So it's very useful for them. Uh, again, it has uh, two PIDs inbuilt and all the fan pump, all these menus are inbuilt. Then we have the advanced ACH 550 series. Uh, again, it has uh, all the features of uh, the earlier VFDs, what we have seen, 310 and 560. Additionally, here we see that it is it has uh, the choke inbuilt uh, right from the 0.75 kilowatt. So right from the smaller ratings to the biggest rating, the choke is inbuilt. So the harmonic performance for this drive would be somewhere between 30 to 40 percent. Similarly, it has a coated board. It has inbuilt the EMC filter. In this is C2 category. So in the 310 we had it was C3. In the 560 it is C2. And in H series the inbuilt EMC filter of the C2 category. The choke is inbuilt for all the rating. We have uh, again two PIDs is inbuilt. Uh, real time clock is inbuilt. Energy saving function, CO2 calculation, all these parameters are inbuilt. Additionally, it has a part of the earlier the 310 and the 560 had only Modbus protocol. This being uh, again an advanced uh, premium HVAC drive, along with Modbus, it has backnet, metasys, and FLN protocols also inbuilt. So it can go to any installation and whatever your BMS system. Most of the time, it will have uh, that protocol inbuilt. It has uh, alphanumeric uh, multi line graphical display. Additionally, it has this fire mode operation inbuilt. So it can be used in those applications where the fire uh, function is required. And uh, all these, uh, again, menus for the HVAC application like fan, pump, cooling tower, compressor, all these are inbuilt in this. Then we have the CH 580. This is our most uh, premium and uh, latest offering. This again uh, basically replaces ACH 550. ACH 550 is in the RAM down mode and this is the 580. 580 has all the features of the earlier drive. Additionally, in 550, uh, we uh, okay, up to 310 and 560, we have the IP20 protection. In ACH550, we have the option of IP21 as well as IP54. In 580, we have the option of IP21 and IP55. Earlier, we had VFDs up to IP54. Now, H580 has the IP55 protection also. 
apart from that, in uh, case of IP 55 EMT, if required, uh, the choke is inbuilt, the EMC filter C2 category is inbuilt, what was backnet, meta says, uh, all these protocols are inbuilt, safe talk off, fire mode operation, pepper control, all this logic is inbuilt. Uh, we have this multi pump operation, all these VC features are inbuilt. Additionally, we have this IP55 rating, and in the IP55, we have the option of uh, C1 filter also. If required for some very critical application, if the specification demands, then the, we have option of C1 filter also in H582 series. Uh, also, if the application demands more than 2 PID, then this VFD has the option of going up to 4 and 5 PIDs also. So, this has the additional PID control loops which are required for more than 2, 3 or 4 PIDs. And then we have our ultra low harmonic drive. Now, if I have to say ultra low harmonic drive, I will basically uh, compare it with. Uh, no, normally, we don't compare this CH580 31 or the ultra low harmonic drive with a standard drive solution. It uh, is compared with a drive with an active filter solution. So, if, uh, in play, if it's a critical application, if the desired harmonic mitigation is uh, less than 5%, then the only option, uh, proper recommended option, is having a drive with an active filter. So, there are certain then advantages with the disadvantages of having an external filter. One is the size or the space requirement is very high. Normally there is a VFT cabinet and there will be a much bigger filter cabinet. So it takes up a lot of space. Plus there would be uh, wiring between VFT and uh, the filter. Plus there is a big, big voltage drop across the uh, filter. There are losses associated with the filter, so there is a very big uh, voltage drop, so the efficiency reduces. Plus, it affects the power quality, the power factor uh, gets deteriorated. So, this ultra low harmonic drive scores over all these points. One is the size is very small because it has this inbuilt. The size of this drive is uh, comparatively bigger than a standard 580 or a standard drive. However, it is much smaller than a additional filter. So, if uh, as compared to that, it takes a very small, or it has a very small footprint. So, it saves a lot of space, which is a, a very useful feature in case of commercial applications for builders. And uh, for any owner, if you recommend this and if you tell me that uh, this is uh, reducing your space requirement, then uh, obviously this is a very important and big feature. Uh, then, second important is the efficiency is high as compared to a filter option. Uh, there is no voltage drop, there is no filter, so there is no voltage drop, so the efficiency is comparatively very high. Again, one very important feature is the power factor we get is of unity, it is proper unity. So even if the other equipments are uh, affecting the power quality, this helps in the overall improvement of the system power quality. So here we get a power quality or power factor of unity. Uh, then one uh, very important feature is because it has an active component inside, it has a voltage right through functionality or it can boost the voltage also. So in case if there is a voltage drop or in cases where there is a voltage fluctuation, normally what happens, the voltage drop is there, the VFD normally increases the current to get the desired torque. This uh, increases the heating and this affects the motor also and many times it uh, trips also because of the uh, voltage drop. But here it maintains that. So if it's uh, some important application where we do not uh, our trip is not desired, then this is a very good solution for that. It has an active component inbuilt and it uh, provides the desired voltage boosting functionality. So in applications like critical applications, what I mentioned earlier, like data centers, hospitals, airports, these places, this uh, is a recommended solution if uh, harmonic mitigation is required. So, like uh, all the advantages which are there in the ACH 580 standard drive, all those are inbuilt in this. Like it is uh, available up to 250 kilowatt. Uh, the EMC filter is inbuilt, or uh, it is up to suitable up to 50 degrees. Modbus, backnet, metasys, all these functionalities are inbuilt. It has uh, additional PIDs. It has uh, the real time clock, USB connectivity, and additionally, it is available in IP21 as well as IP55 protection. 
and additionally it can give a limit the harmonics to less than 5% typically 3% we claim 3% of uh, uh, thid currently then there is uh, basically regenerative type solution this is uh, not very relevant to us but then we have this portfolio this we are supplying to mostly the chiller manufacturers for centrifugal chillers where in excess of 500 kilowatt are required and for uh, some tunnel ventilation applications this we are supplying to metros railways and some road tunnels we have already implemented these solutions then there are some success stories like the statue of unity this uh, the entire environment is controlled on the ABBVFD. Then we have uh, this is uh, one of the biggest channels in uh, India, the Chennai National Tunnel. Here, the entire ventilation system, the air management is managed by ABBVFDs. So these are the big 710 kilowatt uh, uh, active front end regenerative drives, and a lot of. Uh, IT companies and uh, a lot of uh, commercial applications where uh, we have installed these things. That's it from my side.